This is real life levitation. This is me hoping I don't electrocute myself in front of Sam Hugan from Outlander and the entire cast and crew of El Armiguero. And this is me breathing a sigh of relief when physics won the day. At my core as a content creator is just a deep burning desire to share my passion of high voltage physics to everybody on the planet. Over the past seven years, I've shot videos ranging from nuclear fusion and extracting energy out of the clouds to ionic thrust, plasma explosions, and Tesla coils. The possibilities are honestly endless. And when I get the chance, I jump on the opportunity to share it with a television audience as well. Why not? Uh, most recently, that involved the El Armaguero show over in Spain. They are an incredible cast and crew of people. I love them all. And this was my journey over to Madrid, Spain. The members of El Armaguero and I have kept in touch since the first time we met back in 2019. So when I woke up one morning to an email from them inviting me to meet Sam Hugan and bring some of my experiments to the show, I was all on board. Pulling out a few of my favorite builds and demonstrations from the past two years, I printed some protective covers for the ionic thruster, tested my levitation power source, and geared up for one thing. Montage? 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 Montage. Yep. Travel montage. Hello. After 15 hours of travel and flying through what felt like three black holes, I made it to the studio. Filming was the very next day, so I spent some time catching up with old friends and saying hi, and then I went straight to work unpacking my supplies. Now, for those of you who don't know, Pelican cases are pretty much neutron star proof, so what happened next was completely unexpected. Pulling everything out of the Pelican, I was greeted with a lovely surprise. So much for an ionic thruster. With care and respect. Thanks, American Airlines. Always nice when airlines play soccer with your luggage. <laughs> oh man, that was incredibly painful to see. I mean, the thruster is my baby. Imagine taking your baby on a flight and its limbs all fall off like a bunch of Legos. So I figured this was a problem, you know, best solved with one thing. Boiled Spanish bean water. Mm. Muy delicioso. After the caffeine hit, they were kind enough to toss me some UV curing epoxy, and I got straight to work fixing my beloved thruster. The poor thing needed some serious love. A few hours later, and with some help from my friend Javi, the BSI thruster was successfully rebirthed. <laughs> and God did the stars align. So get this, after a full day of testing and repairing, plus some really weird pressure issues we were having with my nuclear fuser, we got everything in working order right before the filming rehearsal. Thank you, Avi. Rehearsals are important so that audio, lighting, and camera teams can prepare for the live filming. Ours went really smoothly, and for the live audience, I'd be hiding right over here on the side, keeping my little high-voltage family company. After another cup of bean water, it was time for me to hopefully not electrocute myself in front of millions of people and my best friend, who was literally sitting in the audience. Auténtico experto en cuanto a dispositivos de alto voltaje. Aquí You're vemos. Expert. Eres un experto. Expert enough. Quick note: I appreciate Spanish, but I'm not fluent in it. So I was provided an earpiece, if you didn't notice, and a personal translator. So whenever I spoke English. She'd translate it into Spanish for everybody, and then whenever Spanish was spoken, it would be gently and tenderly whispered into my ear in English. It was really cool, a bit tricky, because there was like a half second delay between the languages, and you'd also hear two languages at the same time. So it took a while to adjust, but I really appreciated the accommodations they provided. 
lo que tenemos aquí. Wow. Como decíamos antes, el Departamento de Energía de Estados Unidos dio la noticia de que la semana pasada consiguió hacer átomos distintos y crear un nuevo átomo mucho más pesado y que desprende una gran cantidad de energía. You might have noticed that Sam Hugan also had an earpiece in as well with his own personal translator. Now, this is totally normal for all the guests they have on their show. That's correct. Yeah. So, claro que sí. Como decías, este es un dispositivo que se llama unidad de fusión nuclear. Es como si llamáramos una versión mini de un reactor nuclear. Y a diferencia de lo que han conseguido en ese laboratorio americano hace un par de días, en este no se utilizan temperaturas muy altas, sino que lo que se utiliza es un vacío como el del espacio, básicamente, y una tensión. Bajamos la luz, vamos a bajar un poquito las luces y veis, según voy ajustando la presión, deberíais ver cómo aparece ese brillo que se va extendiendo y extendiendo. Y bueno, ahí básicamente tenemos todo lo necesario para la... It was so gorgeous in the dark, you have no idea. Like it wowed everybody in the room. It, it surprised me and I've seen it a million times. It looked amazing. And um, Elon Reguero... I'd love to steal your cameras. No? Yeah, are we now gonna... Sí, algún día. Es una maravillosa y buenísima pregunta. Pero dentro de 40 años. A esta escala es muy seguro. Yo trabajo con aproximadamente de 10 a 12 mil voltios. Cuando llegas allá a 30 mil, 40 mil, 50 mil voltios. Vamos a ver que podemos hacer cosas como apagar esa vela que veis en pantalla a distancia con él. Claro que sí. Ahí estábamos hablando de alta tensión. Aquí también tenemos un motor de alta tensión que se llama un motor iónico y se puede hacer para se puede usar para desplazar el aire usando hasta 40.000 voltios pero como veréis no tiene ninguna aspa en movimiento y bueno aquí medimos el flujo de aire utilizando este dispositivo dos metros por segundo pero podemos hacer algo mucho más visual y mucho más bonito y es usar nitrógeno líquido el nitrógeno líquido va a crear todo este vapor y aquí ponemos esta vela. Esto es chulísimo. Y ahora cuando conecto el motor empieza a soplar dos metros por segundo de aire. Como veis, no hay aspas, no hay ventilador, no hay ninguna pieza que se pueda romper ni deteriorar y potencialmente este sería el futuro. Con los aviones normales. Vamos a ver, mira, ahí estamos viendo de súper cerca, puedo. esos iones, esas cargas. Da un poco como de descarga, ¿no? Se nota ahí. Y oléis que huele el, un poco el, como el, a ozono. ozono. De la aviación de baja velocidad. Este sería el futuro de la aviación. So it might be a little hard to see the thruster in action here. Partly because it was crushed and only at 90%, but also because it's just a prototype. My last video unveiled the BSI Mark II, which takes ionic thrust to a whole new level. You should check out that video. Aquí estamos utilizando el aire en la atmósfera, pero lo que hacen en el espacio es que llevan su propio gas para utilizar un motor iónico, porque si no, no hay aire. Tienes que llevar ese suministro de gas a bordo. Aquí no nos hace falta porque tenemos gas en la atmósfera. Enseñanos más cosas, enseñanos más cosas. Queremos más, queremos más. So, after the ionic thruster, they pulled out the last two demos. Pero en este caso ocurre lo contrario. Tienes un objeto que conduce la electricidad, le aplicas 20.000 voltios y ya te genera el mismo la luz. Lo vais a ver dentro de un momento cómo va a brillar ese agua y bajamos la luz. Esta es una forma completamente distinta de iluminar un objeto. ¿Veis? El objeto ilumina tanto su superficie como su textura. Por favor. Contéstame una pregunta. ¿Seguro que esto no es, no es el aura de la moneda? El alma. Pero, pero que te piensa que es una moneda santa. No, ¿o? Podría ser. <risa> Bueno, lo que vais a ver ahora es algo que yo, si queréis ser vosotros los voluntarios, nos dejaría porque la verdad no, es que... Porque no, porque el experto eres tú. No, 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 no,
Conectármelo directamente a la piel, al, al cuerpo. Que antes estabais hablando de escenas de contacto de piel. Pero no te lo conectes ahí a zonas blandas. Hay varios tipos, como veis, de contacto piel-piel. Siempre por encima de la cintura. For this experiment, the high voltage lead was connected to my skin, and I meant to say like metal on skin contact, but I slipped up and said skin on skin contact. So, Sam's comment was on point. Y aquí lo que vamos a ver es el segundo tipo, la electrostática. Si consigo que se quede ahí, voy a poner la mano encima, llevarme el calambrazo, y deberíais ver algo muy espectacular. Siempre me llevo un calambrazo. Todo por la ciencia. A ver, si es que eres un superhéroe, sin duda. Pero no te voy a dar la mano por si. This was the trickiest demonstration by far, and it worked perfectly the first time. Like I said in the beginning of the video, physics shows up when you need it most. After everything, the show went really smoothly. So, to celebrate, I decided I'm going to pull a prank on the crew of El Hormiguero. So, leading to the stage is a hallway that's lined with pictures of everybody that's been on the show, which is pretty much everybody you've ever heard of. Um, they made the mistake of leaving one spot blank. All these greats are in this hallway. They've all been on the show at some point in time. Absolute legends in the film industry. But I see an empty space right here. So, you know, I think we should fix that, don't you? Right about there looks good. <laughs> I know this isn't my usual type of video, but I had this footage from last year when I was on the show. And I wanted to bring you guys along for the journey. Massive thank you to Elam Reguero for inviting me back. You guys are a wonderful crew of people. And hopefully you as a viewer got a good little glimpse into the struggles and victories of, you know, sharing your passions on a show halfway across the world. So thank you for watching and you stay classy. <laughs>